Alright, so take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so here they say given that a is greater than b, right, so that just tells me, okay, uh, if we're subtracting, let's say we have a minus b, this is going to be negative, right? No, sorry, that's going to be positive because a is larger than b, oh boy. So a minus b is going to be greater than zero. That's true even for negative numbers, right? If you have uh, negative uh, 2 minus negative 3, right? That's still 1, right? Negative 2 is greater than negative 3. And the opposite is true. Uh, if you have b minus a, you know it's going to be negative, right? A small number minus a bigger number is always less than 0. That might help us. Solve for x in terms of a and b. Okay, so we're trying to isolate x in this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do, to do is distribute the b. We have b times x minus uh, 3 times b. But I'm going to put the b in front, sorry, both times. So b times 3. That might help me too. Is greater than or equal to ax plus 7b. So we're trying to isolate x, right? And we've got two different terms with x, one with a, one with b. So what I'm going to do is get them both on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 7b from both sides first, right? And I'm going to actually rewrite that as b7, just to be consistent. You, don't have to, you do not have to do that. It just helps me realize how to subtract these two. And now I've got bx minus b4, right? because we have minus uh, three groups of b and then minus seven. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is distribute this b. We have b times x minus three uh, b, essentially, right? Or b times 3, usually I put the number first, so it's 3b, is greater than or equal to ax minus, uh, plus 7b. So I eventually want to get the bx and ax here, these two terms on the same side, but first I'm going to get, I'm going to move the 7b out of the way, minus 7b. So we have uh, these two cancel out, 7b is minus 7b is 0b, so ax is less than or equal to bx, we have negative 3 groups of b minus 7 groups of b is minus 10b. And now I'm going to bring the bx over with the ax. And this might help us. This idea before here that b minus a is negative. Oops. Right. That might be valuable now. So we have negative 10b is greater than or equal to ax minus bx. And what's the common factor here? Well, x is the common factor. So you have x times a minus b. Right, and now we've got to solve for x. And let me just bring down what we wrote before, so we can see that and talk about its significance here. Okay, so now we want to solve for x. So to solve for x, we just divide both sides by a minus b. Right, like this. Okay. So the thing is that a minus b, those cancel out, we just have x, which is good, that's what we want. But here, what kind of a number are we dividing by, right? Well, we said a minus b is greater than 0, and b minus a is less than 0. So since I have a minus b as a positive number, it won't impact the direction of my inequality. If it was negative, we'd have to reverse the direction of the inequality, so it would be x is greater than or equal to. Just remember that when you're basically dividing or multiplying both sides by a negative value in an inequality, you reverse the direction of the sign. And that goes back to the simple idea, uh, let's say if 1 is less than 2. If I multiply both sides by a negative value, or divide by, let's say, negative 1, that would give me negative 1 and negative 2. But now for this to be true, we have to flip the sign. Because negative 1 is not smaller than negative 2, it's bigger than negative 2. So that negative multiplication on both sides, or division, will reverse your sign. So now we have x is less than or equal to negative 10b over a minus b. But let's just go back, because you could have gone a different direction here. And you should still get the same answer. I just want to clarify that. Let's scroll over. So here, um, let's say you do something slightly different. Let's say you... Um, instead of subtracting 7b from both sides, if you added 3b to both sides. So bx minus 3b greater than or equal to ax plus 7b. I'm just rewriting it. Now we add 3b to both sides. 
right? So let's just watch what happens here. We get bx is greater than or equal to ax plus 10b. And then we subtract ax from both sides. So let's get, it looks a little bit different, right? So you have bx minus ax is greater than or equal to 10b. So now, again, the common factor is x. We have b minus a here, greater than or equal to 10b. But what's b minus a? That's a negative number. So if I divide both sides by b minus a, what's going to happen? Well, divide both sides by b minus a, and we get x is now, so instead of greater than or equal to, is less than or equal to 10b over b minus a. So we reverse the sign because we divide it by a negative. Now these two are actually uh, exactly the same. Negative 10b over a minus b is the same as 10b over b minus a. Uh, let me try and convince you of that really quickly. Um, so let's start here. Negative 10b, right? over a minus b. How do we know that it equals positive 10b over b minus a? Well, if I have negative 10b and if I reverse the order of uh, a and b, like a b minus a, what's going to happen, right? What, what do I do? Well, I have to put a negative sign in the front there. Why? Well, there's a really cool property with subtraction, right? Let's say you have um, 5 minus 3, and then you reverse the 3 and the 5 to 3 minus 5. What's the relationship here? They're different, right? But 5 minus 3 is 2, so 3 minus 5 is negative 2. They're opposites. But I don't want them to be opposites. I want them to be equal. So when does 3 minus... How do I make 3 minus 5 equal? 5 minus 3. Well, I take it and I multiply it by negative 1. Because then you have negative 2 times negative 1, and that equals 2. So if you have any two numbers and you're subtracting them and you switch the order, if you want them to be equal, multiply it by a negative sign. So now we have negative 10b over negative b minus a, a negative parentheses b minus a. That's really the same thing as negative 1 times 10b over negative 1 times b minus a. And those two negative 1s divide to positive 1, and we have 10b over b minus a. So these, you can see that that 10b over b minus a equals negative 10b over a minus b. So they are equivalent. So don't stress out about the exact steps you make. Just remember, if you're dividing and multiplying both sides by a negative value, to split the direction of your inequality. Thanks.